trying to see today if I could find places with changing leaf colors. A little too early, I guess, for a lot of places. And with that in mind, what was going on today? How about we start off with this one, where I guess DJI officially unveiled its Mavic 3 Enterprise series. These are normally meant more for work purposes. They would have things like thermal cameras and all that. So there are basically two different models, the DJI Mavic 3E and the DJI Mavic 3T. Obviously, the T would be the one with the thermal camera. And it says here, the Mavic 3 Enterprise series redefines industry standards for small commercial drones. With a mechanical shutter, a 56 times zoom camera, and an RTK module for centimeter level precision. And you can see all the promotional videos, of course. I was still curious, too, in terms of their thermal camera drones, since they had that, I guess, ban in the US from using their tech and so forth. I was kind of actually interested in what brand of thermal cameras and stuff they use. They don't really say so in general, according to this, anyways. But in terms of the price, how much does it cost? You can see basically on their site, there's something called like what? The DJI Mavic 3E Worry-Free Basic Combo, $3,470. And there's a plus combo for $5,090 US. And kind of interesting where it says in the description here, there's unlimited free repair services within the coverage limit. So you can actually keep crashing this, for example, and keep bringing it in. And then they have the 3T version, and here it says, what, 5,320 US, or for the plus combo, $7,110. They say it's worry-free, I guess, in terms of things like the crashing and all that, but for a lot of people, if you're just trying to buy this, it's just say for a regular individual, you'd have to worry about your wallet, I guess. With about, what, a 45 minute flight time according to them, and it's portable. I can imagine a lot of professionals and industrial people buying a drone like this at the same time. In some places like the US, where they pretty much are banning Chinese companies like DJI from doing things like government work or sensitive projects with any Chinese made drones, will people still purchase this? Lots of, I guess, politics when it comes to this stuff too. Doesn't matter how good the specs and stuff are, can you actually fly it? And in terms of things like regulations and all that, this was actually really interesting to think about. You have often heard talks on how people will be held accountable if they fly, let's just say, a drone recklessly and all that. How about when it comes to, I guess, a drone that operates on AI and it does something, let's just say, bad? Well, apparently there's a proposal in the EU where companies and stuff, I guess, could be held liable. This one says, EU draft rules to make it easier to sue drone makers, AI systems individuals and companies that suffer harm from drones, robots, and other products or services equipped with artificial intelligence software will find it easier to sue for compensation under EU draft rules seen by Reuters. The AI Liability Directive, which the European Commission will announce on Wednesday, aims to address the increasing proliferation of AI-enabled products and services and the patchwork of national rules across the 27-country European Union. Victims can sue for compensation for harm to their life, property, health, and privacy due to the fault or omission of a provider, developer, or user of AI technology or was discriminated in a recruitment process using AI, the draft rules said. The rules seek to lighten the burden of proof on victims by introducing a presumption of casualty, which means victims only need to show that a manufacturer or a user's failure to comply with certain requirements caused the harm and then link this to the AI technology in their lawsuit. That's really interesting, even beyond drones and all that. It says, under a right of access to evidence, victims can ask a court to order companies and suppliers to provide information about high-risk AI systems so that they can identify the liable person and find out what went wrong. The EU executive will on Wednesday also update the product liability directive, which sets out the scope for manufacturers' liability for defective products ranging from smart technology to machinery and to pharmaceuticals. If you think about it, technically that means if you're using a drone autonomously, for example, it's making its own decisions for obstacle sensing and all that, then if it hurts someone, then you could actually sue them? Or how about this privacy thing? It's so sketchy. Imagine it's flying back autonomously, returned to home, and then someone says, oh, it's quote spying on me. Like, you know, that's a thing. So would they be able to sue people for that because it's a robot making a decision where you're gonna say, oh, you should have took, I don't know, a big turn instead of going over me instead, that type of thing. And at the same time, just in terms of things, for example, like what discrimination over recruiting process, that opens up a lot of, I guess, interesting scenarios 
imagine in situations where it is a thing, certain platforms are more biased towards, I guess, certain people or like say a content type. So how would that fare out with this? Very fascinating. And the last thing I read was kind of interesting. At first I thought this was bad, but apparently it was planned and they were celebrating it. NASA sent out, I guess like here, a DART mission per se, that's what they call, I guess, what they sent up there to crash into an asteroid for defense purposes. This one says, NASA's DART mission hits asteroid and first ever planetary defense test. After 10 months of flying in space, NASA's double asteroid redirection test, the world's first planetary defense technology demonstration, successfully impacted its asteroid target on Monday, the agency's first attempt to move an asteroid in space. And for the size, it says DART targeted the asteroid moonlet Dimmerfoss, a small body just 530 feet, 160 meters in diameter. It orbits a larger 2,560 foot asteroid called Didymos. Neither asteroid poses a threat to Earth. And you can see people celebrating and stuff with all the videos and so forth, like here, where they officially posted it on their Twitter and all that. That's kind of interesting, I guess preparing for a disaster. People often say we're gonna die with an asteroid and all that. I guess this is a way to prepare for it. See you guys later.